Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Pro League of Legends commentary done by Luminous. Today I'm joined by CLG's Link, as we're going to be casting Copenhagen Wolf versus Evil Geniuses. And of course, this is from the European League of Legends Championship Series. Link, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? You don't, you don't sound too good. You sound a little bit tired, but that's expected because you just had some big matches today, right? Yeah, I just came back from our uh, NALCS match and we just beat the uh, complexity today. But I'm here to do a cast with you on, on um, a League of Legends game that was actually played about a week ago. Yeah, just on the week ago when they played this match, both Hi Copenhagen Wolf and Evil Geniuses, I believe they're ranked 4 and 4th and 5th respectively. So despite this not being your top notch match, if you will, they're still very closely matched and we're going to get a very, very good game nonetheless. And of course, uh, EG is very well respected in the community for their last year's efforts and uh, play. Uh, here, we're going to get into the picks and bans right here. Alright, so one thing I noticed from EG side as they have Renekton, uh, Jarvan, uh, Alistar, as well as Gray being picked up is that this team composition is actually overall very, very tanky. The most noticeable thing is Alistar being one of the tankiest support ever uh, for in period. And that's going to make it very, very difficult for. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves seems like they're a little bit more mobility based with the two ninja uh, picks here, Zed as well as uh, Shen. They're gonna kind of dash in and out team fight and try to get those kills, but right now the front lines of uh, EG is looking like it's very hard to penetrate. Uh, yeah, definitely. Copenhagen Wolves has a lot of uh, laning, strong laning presence heroes. Uh, they have a global with Shen, which means all of the other lanes will have some sort of a uh, backup in case something goes wrong. So EG has to respect Shen's global and, uh, throughout the whole game. Xin Zhao, of course, being a very strong jungler in the early game, which means that he will provide uh, presence through his strong ganks. Uh, Zed, of course, AD, K, uh, AD Bruiser uh, mid that can easily 1v1 anyone. Uh, one thing to note here is that uh, Zed was actually first picked, which means Bajirkson is actually really confident going into Frog and, uh, as a 1v1 matchup. So we'll see how Lux uh, plays with Froggen's counterpick. Now, I don't have too much experience with this matchup myself, but Zed definitely have the, I guess, say, innate advantage here because Lux is mostly, bit, you know, skill shots after skill shots after skill shots. She's working on a mana pool, and Zed is working on a quote unquote unlimited resources on the energy pool. And if you're good enough, which I imagine Froggen will be, uh, or not Froggen, um, the Zed player will be, he, he should be able to dodge most of, or at least some of, uh, Lux's skill shots, correct? Uh, yeah, definitely. Also, uh, Zed is probably going to pick up the red pot early, which means he's going to have an advantage going into the laning phase. Which means uh, Zed, of course, being one of the heroes known to dominate lane, uh, we'll see if he will push up Froggen and harass him under tower and keep Froggen pressured. So you're definitely a mid player, and we'll, we'll talk about the lane stage once we get there, especially since you play a lot of Lux games. But let's quickly talk about the lanes. I know the uh, champions are not exactly on screens right now, but we'll see them in just a bit. And you kind of talk about this early a little bit as well. On the bot lane matchup, we're probably going to see support Lulu going to be helping out Verse, going up against Alistar and Graves. The mid matchup, as you kind of mentioned so far already, is Zed uh, versus Lux. Jungle respectively for both team, I believe, in Xinjiao for the blue side and Jarvan for red. And last but not least, uh, Shen is going to be going up top against Renekton. Yes. Uh, so... Here the level 1 is actually panning out right now. Looks like uh, Copenhagen Wolves is actually fanning out, which means they're playing as a more defensive start, while uh, Evil Genius is actually grouping up for the bottom uh, and try invade. So uh, we'll see what happens. Varus is actually at bottom try. So if Froggen can get a snare off, things can actually spell up. I Very poorly a little bit of spike on my oh. video. Spell binding is, or light binding is going to find him, and oh well, he's pretty much dead. Nice dodge on the pulverize. The arrow is going to try to slow down the entire team, but I mean, there's just too much spells, too much slow. The flag giving them sight, and that's going to be a first blood easily picked up by Alistar, I believe, and Amida D War there as well. Lulu's on the run, and I think she's going to make it out of there alive. But now, with the entire jungle being invaded here by evil geniuses, they could do whatever I want. And imagine they're going to take at least a camp or two before heading back to their lanes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, four summoner spells used by evil geniuses right there, three of them being flashes. Uh, they definitely wanted the first blood, and they actually got a kill off of it. Uh, kind of poor play there from Varus because he should have reacted a little bit faster, but uh, very nice reactions from Kreppel being uh, flash exhausting immediately. So it looks like uh, the Evil Geniuses has warded the entire red side of uh, Copenhagen Wolves, and looks like they're going to look for a red trade, red buff trade right here. 
Yeah, both, uh, well, it's actually pretty smart play by Copenhagen Wolves. They got their jungle invaded, so, like, you know what? We can't take our jungle. We can't really go back and challenge it either. Might as well steal their jungle, because, well, EG is not there. So, there's that red, uh, steal that you're talking about, and Copenhagen Wolf again says, All right, we'll steal your red. Renekton comes around, trying to do a little bit of harass, but is going to get driven away. I don't think he can steal this one. Yeah, he definitely cannot. And, uh, there we go. Uh, both junglers taking each other's red. Yep, and uh, they actually both use smite, and they actually opted to not clear their, their jungle, which means that the jungle won't actually, the red buff won't respawn until they actually clear it themselves. Uh, looks like they're gonna go back to blue, and the lanes themselves are fairly standard. Uh, no two v ones, no two v twos mid, uh, nothing uh, strange like that. This game is as standard as it can get. All right, so that the first question I really want to throw at you is the bot lane, how that's gonna turn out? Because Alucard's got that first blood, got that slight exp advantage, of course, uh, for both the heroes here, uh, both the champions here. So Lulu, I mean, okay support, but Alucard getting that level advantage and being the tankier support, how that's how is that gonna affect that lane? Uh, actually, uh, the advantage for is uh, towards Varus and Lulu because uh, it's a double range. Uh, lane versus uh, melee and a range, which means uh, the harassing potential for Lulu is actually really good. Also, Alistar does not fare very well versus Lulu because of her slow. She can always kite backwards with Varus poke. Uh, it's kind of a poking sort of lane, and you can see right there, uh, Lulu's QE combo with a Varus E dishes out a lot of damage. And one thing to note is that even though Alistar got first blood, they actually did not back up, which means he can't utilize the first blood gold. Uh, Graves also has no sustain, which means uh, if Varus and Lulu can keep up this pressure, they can uh, easily win the lane and uh, gain lane control. Yeah, meanwhile, of course, both junglers looking to gank as well as counter gank. And mid lane here, a lot of physical harass coming out here from Froggen as well as our Zed player. Froggen was actually able to land a, a lamp, uh, light binding with doing some harass. Meanwhile, Zed trying his best to do that harass as well. Pretty even lane matchup from both sides. The CS tells a similar score there as well, although... Uh, yeah, there's really no- Oh, it looks like mid lane oh, happening right now, and Froggen's low! He's gonna level up, okay, and really is he gonna- not... Oh, nice shield here to prevent the damage output. He's gonna live. Damn, that was so close. But here comes the backstab coming from- Uh-oh, is he, is he gonna be okay? Looks like he's gonna be fine using a living shadow and jumps the hell out of there. Yeah, definitely. The level up from Froggen actually saved his life. He lived with 5 HP. Uh, the shield actually didn't do much because the Ignite ran out there. So, a uh, very lucky play from Froggen, or it, it might have been just all planned. Man, that's some, some next level timing, man. Yeah, so definitely uh, the Lux counter pick into uh, uh, Zed isn't actually working out too much uh, because uh, Lux is actually getting pressured pretty hard. So, Bajerson actually doing a lot of work mid lane, and it's definitely huge because Froggen, known for one of the for being one of the best uh, AP mids in the world uh, is actually getting pressured. So, really interesting, and it looks like the mid lane is going to be controlled by Zen if things go well for him. And we have a pause right here. Hopefully, uh, nothing too big coming out. Looks like we have a very, very quick and pause to uh, fix oh, okay. through this one. I guess they, they just uh, took out the pause timing, but eh, no big deal. You guys are not missing too much action at home here, as we will have you covered. And uh, both uh, both uh, solo mid being forced back here, which is again not exactly an even lane matchup, but yeah, Froggen barely surviving there. Meanwhile, I mean, is there any chance that Froggen could actually get a kill or snipe if he just unleashes a full combo, um, or is that going to be just too careful for that kind of stuff? Uh, Zed should be careful for that stuff because uh, in order for Zed to die, Lux would literally have to land about uh, three E's on him and a Q, and then land up with a follow. With a full combo. If anything, Lux needs a gank from Jarvan in order to kill him. But uh, because of how Zed is and how his escape works, he should be fine. You know, our top lane gang comes out with Jarvan or Nectin going on Shen. Shen just immediately taunts out and is able to live. Oh, actually, they, they kind of want to keep him pressured. Yeah, they're kind of uh, diving on him right now. He's about half HP. There's a light. Uh, there's a flag being dropped out. He jumps away again. He should be fine. But his tier two, his tier one tower up top is going to be a tier one turret up top is going to sustain a ton, a, a ton of damage. And this is a very important time for the jungler to come out and help out. And he is going to rotate, as you can see on the mini map. Don't want to miss too much XP or let his turret fall down. That's a ton of early game gold that you can't give away. And he's right there. All right, so this is really a good play from Snoopy and Wicked, actually, because even though they didn't get the kill, they were able to deny him the CS, and that's that's really important because early early levels are really important, especially trying to hit level six. Uh, meanwhile, Bridgerton gets uh, a death mark onto Froggen and actually will pick up uh, second blood on him. Very nice play from him. Yeah, we talked about the uh, laning disadvantage here by Froggen early time. We saw him just barely surviving with the level up. No level up luck or timing here, and he's gonna go down. Of course, Jarvan says the lane is free. Let me get some EXP. Let me get some of that mid creeps. 
And uh, again, trying to protect the tower uh, and get some EXP there. Meanwhile, Copenhagen Wolves is going to send two up top here as the jungler did come out of there as well. There's just a lot of early game pressure despite the score being 1-1 one one right now. Both teams is just making very aggressive and really good defensive play on both parts. And Copenhagen Wolf pushing the turret, uh, pushing the creep wave up to the turret. Uh, Wix is going to swing around and he should be okay under the protection of the turret. But looks like they're going to make a dive for him right now. He's got to jump out. He does. Nicely played. Nice dodge by Wicked, and Wicked knows that he can't exactly get dove with his ultimate up and flash up. So, uh, knowing that two people are top, they EG responds with a 4 man attempt on Dragon, and it looks like they, they timed it perfectly because uh, Copenhagen's Wolf bot lane actually backed at the same time. Which fans are going to get a free Dragon off of this, and uh, Zinzao is going to be kind of wasting his time top lane. Uh, he's just going to steal the Wraiths, and he's just trying to opt the take advantage of what he can do right now. Yeah, despite so Frog and dying to that uh, uh, Zed to the mid lane, the ultimate was used, so there's going to be, you know, no ultimate to actually combat the dragon as you well. So the number advantage, the ultimate advantage here for EG, and they completely capitalize on that. Blue's going to get tempted here, and uh, Frog is going to pick that one up. He does. I'm going to go back to lane and write some up more. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing to note right now is that Shen is level 6, which means uh, every lane on the map has some sort of backup and global pressure. So uh, EG is definitely going to be feeling this. So whenever they're, they're going for a gank, it can t quickly turn from a 1v1 to a 2v1 or even a 2v2 into a 3v2. So they definitely have to watch out for that and respect his power. Uh, Zed's just going to pick up his blue buff so he can uh, make sure that his energy never gets low pretty much. Yeah, and I mean, this will allow him to pressure uh, Froggen even more. You're talking about the uh, anti, anti dive. I mean, if EG makes a dive, then they have to watch out for Shen. But on the same token here, if uh, Copenhagen Wolves want to make a big dive, they know there's a plus one there coming there as well. So uh, whenever Shen's ultimate's going to be up, it's always going to be in the back of mind, like you said, for evil geniuses. And it's going to be somewhat tough uh, to combat against. Spells being traded back and forth right now. Alistar should be fine. He's so damn tanky. He eats a ton of punishment. But at the same time, you don't want to eat too much uh, free punishment. He's going to drop a heal or two and uh, should be mostly okay on the bot lane. Right now, gold difference is about 1k. Neither, it's really like not even a noticeable uh, lead. We talked about how EG getting the first blood and they were able to raid the enemy jungle, but I mean, now we're 10 minutes in the game, 9 minutes in the game, and the effects of that raid hasn't really been felt. The game is really, really even, and we do see our jungler for uh, Copenhagen, Copenhagen Wolf trying to set up something, but he's actually wasting a lot of time here. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh... Alistar is actually getting really close. Oh, Zen Zhao gets a charge off and he's going to go for it. Alistar uses ultimate and he's interesting back out. Uh, they basically burned uh, Alistar's ultimate, so it's a pretty good gank. Uh, now Karpo won't be as tanky as he can be because his ultimate isn't up. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, even though the goal difference isn't that big, uh, if you look at mid lane, uh, Zed is up 20 CS already and that advantage is going to slowly pile up because Zed will just farm faster and faster as he gets items and scales with his uh, W passive. Yeah, 20 go up and a kill up, let's not forget about that, and you know, that matchup is really, really uh, in the favor of Zed. And keep in mind, he's doing it against Rogan, which is, again, like you said, one of the best AP make carries. So it's it's definitely a very, very uh, high respect here to our Zed player. Meanwhile, of course, uh, even though that there was a 3v2 situation on the bot lane, uh, Copenhagen and Wolf know they're safe because they still have that Shen back up. Meanwhile, looks like a little bit of pressure up top. I'm not sure they really will get this kill. Oh, bot lane here. They're gonna uh, jump right on Alistar despite being the tanky support. Not gonna survive that one. They're gonna jump on Graves as well. He flashes out. Barely making it out of their life. And these these pressure being put up on uh, Wolves. But meanwhile on the bot lane here, it looks like they want to get a little bit of turret action themselves. Making the second push up top and eventually gonna get this turret. Turret is actually very, very low. Surprisingly, they don't just go on there and clean that one up. But they're gonna rotate mid and help out there instead. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened bot lane. I think they overextended without wards or something. Maybe uh, the blue side actually set up really good pink wards to uh, counter the wards. Uh, so uh, they should they should have known and played a little bit more safe because they knew Alistar's uh, ulti was down. Uh, now that uh, Grave Slash is down, they have to even play more safer. Uh, bot lane actually backed up. Zin is still bottom with Lulu, which means uh, Evil Genius has actually reacted perfectly. Top lane swung to mid, and they're going to get a free tower off of this. So Evil Genius' experience actually come into into play here because they're actually getting map control even though they're down in kills. Yeah, true count right now. They have lost out one on the bot lane, but like you said, the rotation from top to mid ensured them two turret kills themselves. So they're ahead in terms of both gold. Well, I was going to say both gold and kills, uh, but they're definitely not ahead in kills. But looks like they were trying to even up on the mid lane here. Jumping back out is Zed, and he should be okay. He is fine. And uh, again, just maintaining that big lead and... I'm not sure how Lux is going to catch up. I don't think Lux can catch up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jigerson is actually uh, dodging these ganks actually really well. Even though he's drawing a lot of pressure towards mid because uh, 
he can pretty much overextend and do what he wants because of how how Zed works right now. Uh, Froggen can't really do much. He's uh, look at how Zed can just walk up freely and he can freely push up the wave, which means uh, the mid lane matchup is pretty much just one for Zed. And there's not really, again, looking that Lex could do about it. And here's the scary thing. Zed could single-handedly kind of take over the game. Um, he's one of the most uh, snowball kind of champions out there. And that's kind of dangerous when you think that he could solo dominate a lane like this, get kills, roaming wherever the map. He's going to be at some stage of the game where he sees any hero on Evil Geniuses and basically says, yeah, I could kill you, and I could kill you too. So... If you're EG, what do you do against this? I mean, despite having fairly tanky champions, Zed is starting to become an issue because of that farm lead, because of the inventory lead that he's going to pick up, especially after that turret kill that they're going to get up top. If you're EG, what do you do here? Uh, they should actually uh, swap lanes or even send the two v their AD carry and support to deal with uh, Zed. If anything, they should also group up because uh, I, I believe that EG's team comp is actually superior to uh, Copenhagen Wolves. Copenhagen Wolves team comp is actually really good for laning, but once they group up, it's very hard to uh, deal with like Peel, Exhaust, uh, and they can always control Zed in a team fight. Uh, one thing to notice there is that uh, Zed knew that Lux was low on mana, so he, he freely pushed on mid and went top and took a tier 1 tower. Now they're all grouped here, here at mid, and uh, they're having Shen split push top, and Renekton is reacting to uh, counter him. So if, again, if a fight breaks out here, it's going to be 5v4 because Shen could teleport in. And uh, good read on the mana though, that, that's something that you view as a spectator and it's not that clear, but as a player and of course as a mid player for you, that's a pretty big deal here as we do see blue being carried up once again. Uh, you talked about the uh, team fight potential of evil geniuses, I mean the AoE is insane, headbutt into pulverize, into Demacian, into laser beams, there's a ton of AoE and if all things land correctly, Copenhagen Wolves, they're not that tanky, or at least not as tanky as EG, so everything could be fired off from EG and uh, CW could be in big trouble. And it looks like we're going to have the two teams running into each other, light binding for a little bit of scouting, laser beam being popped out, Lulu, half of her health done instantly. Let's see if uh, EG could get that dragon, but maybe not. Oh, look at Alistar just being the ninja in those trees right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, Alistar is going to get a uh, polarize off of Zed. Zed will instantly die to laser and binding if I breaks out 5v4 now. Uh, Renekton is going on people. And uh, it looks like Shen goes in and Shen's going to get pulverized. And Shen flashes out and they're all going to live. So Zed well, instantly dies. Oh, no. The fight well, still goes. Supe, Supe gets a EQ combo off with a laser. A light binding. And then they are able to take off Shen. So definitely a good fight for uh, Evil Geniuses. And one thing to note right there is that this happened because they knew the dragon timer and when it was going to spawn and they got dragon control because of their pink wards. So it led to a face check from Zed and that pretty much won them the fight. They're going to get a dragon off right here, so very good play from EG. Yeah, EG just showing off they have the better map control. They came a little bit more prepared. You talked about the uh, dragon time. They were ha they had multiple sets of pink wards now and because of that, seizing the map control. They had no idea where Alistar is and you cannot... Uh, especially against this particular dangerous AoE lineup of EG, not knowing where, you know, the dangerous heroes are. So, they got definitely punished for it. That's two extra kill. Now EG is back on the uh, goal lead and on the kill lead. They have That's the second dragon. I mean, this amount of goal being matched up here by EG is starting to do more, a little bit more and more tough here for Copenhagen Wolf. Uh, but they're never too far behind, so we definitely shouldn't count them out yet, but they're definitely disadvantaged right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing you, you even said before is that uh, Copenhagen Wolves isn't exactly a tanky team, and Zed is, has been going pure damage right now, and he has very uh, zero survivability items, and you can see just from one CC followed up into another CC, they can easily kill him, and uh, that's one thing that EG did very well there. Uh, looks like they're going to hand off the red buff, oh, never mind, uh, Snoopy just killed it, what, what is coming back? Can we pass it off to uh, Yellow Feet? Meanwhile here, EG doing a little bit of pressure on the bot lane. Uh, Shen in position as well, but here comes the gank party, Alder leading that charge. Uh, in terms of the hero movement right here, we do see Grave just farming up, up on the top lane, Renekton on the mid, and slight amount of pressure being exerted on the bot lane. It feels like, despite Copenhagen Wolf having the more mobility base here, Zed doing his thing, start, gonna start doing a little bit of split push. Um, seems like they're content to split the map open. I mean, like you said, EG is good in a 5v5, situ 5v5 situation. And if you see W, you say, all right, we don't take your fight when you're strongest. We we are going to do our thing and force you to come to us. And they should be fine like that, right? If they don't get caught, that is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, CDW just wants to look to farm up. And uh, they want to hit this point where they can actually do a lot of damage while being a little bit tanky. So they're going to look for uh, Zed to finish his core items and then 
build a little bit more defensively, defensively. and splitting allows um, them to do that because uh, they can always force these fights where it's disadvantage, disadvantageous for EG because they have they always have Shen Ultimate. Yeah, Shen Ultimate is proving to be a bigger and bigger factor despite the fact that there's the score is only two to three, uh, and how Shen's Ultimate is only used for fights, but. Just having it available just makes the enemy play a little bit more differently and allows a lot more option for your team. Again, split push up top for Shen. Meanwhile, the dire, or not the dire, the red team is have to be focusing to do a lot more work together uh, as a team. And that's actually going to hurt your experience growth as well as your goal intake, uh, especially compared to split push. Uh, but that, that turret, by the way, not long for life. EG is going to pick that one up. And again, more turret goal. Meanwhile, Shen is answering back or at least trying to do so with the top turret. Yeah, uh, Zed's pushing top and Renekton actually reacted. Uh, one thing to notice there is that EG took opportunity, took an opportunity that, that just barely came up, and they noticed that people were basing on uh, Copenhagen Wolves, and they actually just grouped, pushed out mid and grouped the bottom. And now they're going to force a 4v4 right here. They know that Shen isn't the one split pushing top, which means they aren't afraid of a 5v4. So it's, it's, a, it's a complete 4v4, and it looks like EG might be not long to say. Actually, they're not going uh, to choose to siege. They're just going to back out because uh, Zed has gone missing. And it looks like they're just going to go back mid. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good reaction, right? You don't know where uh, you don't know where the, uh, uh, the, the enemy is. fit. Yeah, so right. you don't you don't really want to start a fight. Yeah. Suddenly they show up behind. It looks like oh, they do find Zed and Zed. Sh I, I want to say he should be okay. He's a very mobile hero, but no, here comes Shen. It's coming back here, trying to get something going. But this is a two v five. The allies are coming in. The Masi into laser beam. A ton of AOE damage being dished out here. And Copenhagen Wolf in big trouble. It looks like they have lost one, but looks like Lux has gone down as well. Two v one v one down for so far. And Copenhagen Wolf seems like they're winning this. But here comes Wiki. He's doing a ton of damage output. That's a double kill for Graves, and that's a double kill that you don't want to land on. Right now, that was a two for two trade. But I imagine Evil Geniuses came out fully ahead there. Yeah, definitely. It was a 4v5 for Copenhagen, or for EG at the very start, too. Uh, so the fight went well for Copenhagen Wolves, but then I think they overstayed too long, and then they lost the last two in the end. So definitely a, a good good outcome for EG. They're actually getting some pressure on the map right here. Top is pushing out, mid is pushing out, bottom is pushing out. So all these lanes, they're going to get some creeps denied right here. So good play. And the big thing is, because the creep equilibrium so far in here for Copenhagen Wolf, they gotta respond, they have to go to their respective lanes and make sure they get that EXP. And the Dragon's coming back in very, very soon. Again, we talked about the Dragon Advantage for EG, and I think they're gonna even capitalize even further on that Dragon Advantage. You can see the goal lead now up to 3k. I mean, we talked about the goal lead not being a big deal before, but is it starting to be a, to be, to be a big deal here for, for EG? Yeah, definitely. Even though, even if you want, want to say that the goal count doesn't matter, but if you look at the map and look at the ward coverage of EG into their jungle, it just shows how much ward control and map control they have. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves has to react right now by pushing out every single wave, and and they can't actually utilize their their split push uh, sort of comp. And what's gonna happen is as as the creep waves slowly push out, uh, the creep waves are gonna are gonna uh, group up, uh, and then what happens is EG is able to push them out, reverse push, and what's going to happen is Dragon is going, to, is going to come out and lanes are going to be in a really favorable position for them. Yeah, it's it's kind of like pick your poison. If you want to push out, you're going to forfeit Dragon. If you don't forfeit Dragon, then well, your creep wave is, you're going to lose a ton of VXP in going doing so. So uh, it's a tough decision, uh, position for CW to be in right now. Again, the jungle raid does not stop as EG is all up in your grill like this. What they do have to worry about is EG again is they're not farming too much in the enemy jungle. They might be denying a couple of buffs here and there. They might be denying some farm. Oh! That was some oh, sick nice. play here. Did he have war vision there? Or is it just like uh, guess? I, I don't know. I, I I think that was a I think that was blind. Or was was there a word? There had to be a word. There was no way that Frogman would randomly do that. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the word ran out. I don't know. But either way, that was really good laser from uh, Frogan. Well. Frogan known for those blue steals with his Lux laser. Um Right here, EG is going to push out top and bottom, and Dragon is up right now, which means they're going to group up immediately. At least yeah. Graves should. Graves is uh, sort of out of position, because Copenhagen Wolves is actually grouped up on Dragon. Looks like they're going to, they're going to give up Dragon control here, for uh, at least EG will. Well, I mean, they haven't given it up just yet. Both teams are dancing back and forth. Graves is making his trek down to the mid lane. And I think he will make it down here. And Alistar, of course, in his good position. He was going to break out that Binding Light if it hit, man. That was the initiation they need. Did not hit them. Of course, Lulu staying quite far back. Shen up in the front. Got that Sunfire Arcade being finished, so the AoE damage started to will be bringing down. Both teams are dropping those wards. D ward coming out instantly, though. Pink ward and yeah. nearby. Vision and, uh, is so important right now. Uh, uh, EG has the oracles, which means that they're able to uh, completely D ward everything. Uh, looks like uh, 
Copen, Hogan Wolves is gonna give up the dragon right here. And uh, Lux is gonna clear mid. Oh, actually, they're gonna they're gonna take the tier one tower here. They can't do anything much about it. So they they opted for the trade because they knew that they wanted they don't want to face check into a, a really bad fight where they don't have any vision. So I mean, uh, you know you're not gonna get the dragon. So very very smart play. At least get something that you can get for sure. So a turret for dragon, not exactly your best trade, but still a trade on the least. Yeah, definitely. And it looks like uh, Zed actually knows that the enemy or EG, EG's red is up and he's gonna take it right here. Uh, EG is looking to just uh, stay around mid. Uh, they're not doing anything too important right now. Uh, I guess they know that the red is up now and they're gonna go over to find out that it's not up and laser comes out to check and it's down. I mean, that laser has such a low cooldown that, you know, if you... The, the reward of getting that hit versus the off chance of misses, not exactly a big deal. It's such a low cooldown. The mono region yeah, on Lux is, is fine. So, speaking of Lux, uh, haven't really checked on... Well, actually, this is a good time once they switch it back to our item composition. Because we got about 23 minute play and we've been talking a lot about hero movement and, and in terms of trading uh, war control and trading uh, lane waves for dragons and things of that such. I think this is a good time to talk about the items. I haven't actually paid too much attention to it. Uh, Link, I'm sure you have paid more attention to it than myself. Any, any insights on, on the items that... Still, they're not. There you go. The item finally being yeah. popped up here. One thing I know, do know this is that uh, Hourglass is picked up here by Lux, and that's basically a concession. I want to say it's a good item on Lux, none the least, but it, mostly a concession to Zed. And speaking of Zed, looks like they're tangled up here against a Wicked up top. Wicked try to fight this, but look at Zed's damn job. But in fact, Zed in a bit bigger trouble, I imagine. Bam! Suddenly turns it around. Oh my god, he just popped. That ultimate is insane. The laser comes around. Not gonna get that kill. Can he make it out alive, though? I, I don't think he is. Grave, closing in close. The recall, I don't think he's gonna make it. Yeah, cancels the recall. He did. He did to that turret. Yeah, and just look at what Zed did. He himself drew five people top. And uh, Copenhagen was took advantage of this and were split pushing the whole time. Three people are gonna take tier two low. Oh, Krebel flashes in, but isn't able to get the headbutt combo, headbutt pulverized combo off. Which means that's just a waste of summoners. Shannon is still push pushing out bottom. So, uh, very good play from the Jerkson right there. Uh, he's drawing so much pressure, it it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you know, one side you can say, man, out of position, died. Uh, but he, he at least traded one for one, drew a lot of attention, allowed his team to push both mid and bot lane. Especially when you have this kind of turret disadvantage, any kind of split push they can get, especially when you get favorable turret trades, that's more power to you, and that's exactly what happened there. And of course, uh, well, the fight's not over yet. Knock up here against uh, Copenhagen Wolf, and he's going to try to make it out there. He's going to TP out with his ultimate. He's going to run down the mid lane, and Laser Beam comes. That's going to miss narrowly as well. Froggen, he, his eyes is just everywhere, always making sure he gets a snipe. Unfortunately, misses there, but, you know, can't hurt him for, again, such low cooldown spell. It doesn't hurt that if you miss. Got to make sure you miss all the shots that you don't take, right? So... Yeah, definitely, and Shan not even that tanky. Well, he only had one item during the whole exchange and was able to live for the, for that long. It just shows how tanky he is as a, as a hero. Uh, speaking of which, uh, one thing to note is that Copenhagen Wolves is a full AD team, which means uh, they have no magic damage. So uh, the later this goes, the better it is it will be for EG because they will be able to just build, to, to, just, to just defend versus only one type of, uh, versus of, uh, one type of attribute. Yeah. yeah, damage type, okay. But... Uh, as we do see the two group up here, uh, you can see again split pushing up coming up Zed from top lane here, and Wicked is diving in head by Pulverize. That's gonna hit on two, and the AOE will just rain down. Will that be enough? That's the question right now. EG looking pretty good, but they will disengage. Ultimate being used here by Wicked, and uh, that thing has a two minute cooldown, so I don't think they can fight actually. Meanwhile, though, Zed gets a turret up the top. They do trade a, a turret basically at, at the end of the day, and I'm not sure that. I'm not sure who that favors, in fact. I think it favors Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, uh, for sure. Because uh, uh, EG cannot push anymore. Because if, if they were to 5-man push bottom, Copenhagen Wolves would have easily held. And what would happen was Zed would have just taken a free tier 3 top. So very good play. They, they opted for a trade right there. So uh, I don't know what Zed's doing right here. He seems to be out of position. Nope, he, he does not care at all. He's just going wherever he wants and just farming constantly. And uh, you can see the CS difference. It's up by 50 now from compared to... Uh, him and Froggen. Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit unfair to compare his CS to Froggen right now because the two players have been playing in a very distinctive style. Uh, Froggen's been basically playing with his team and, and Zed being used to split push, so he's gonna get a ton of CS. He's being used to counter split push as well, so uh, he, he's gonna just reign in terms of CS. And the damage output, like you talked about, is gonna get scarier and scarier. A little bit of blue steel here coming out from EG. 
Uh, but yeah, definitely. Do we have time to talk about items? Seems like this game, despite not being too many kills, it's always there's some action on the map. Give us some knowledge, yeah. Link, yeah. real quick. Yeah. yeah, there's always something going on. Right now, they're gonna take Baron control here. Uh, as for items, uh, for the most part, it's it's always it's all standard. Uh, the Zed is really farmed though. He has a Black Cleaver and Blade of the Rune King. He's probably gonna go for a more defensive item slot right here, or maybe he might even go for the Last Whisper or Bloodthirster, depending on what he wants to do. Especially if he, if he's gonna keep solo split pushing. But uh, if, if you notice that Renekton has a has a a Warden's Mail, a Giant's Mail, and a, and a Chain Vest, and Zed instantly popped him. So even though Renekton is building all this tanky defensive stats, and he cannot even 1v1 Zed, you know that Zed is strong, and he is able to 1v1 anyone on EG's team. So uh, look out for Zed to constantly split push while Shen is going to split push another lane. So they're going to keep the lane pressure up right here. And even if you send a two-man gank party to stop Zed, it's not going to work, right, because of Shen. Suddenly that turns into a 2v2, and Zed is worth at least two champions, so... I don't know, it's actually looking pretty tough here for Copen uh, for evil geniuses. And that's despite being them able to take up three dragons. Uh, and, and again, first blood. And, like They had basically a steady advantage throughout the entire game, but the advantage never felt big enough. And Zed right now is looking big enough to, you know, say damn to your advantage. I could single, single carry my team back to victory. Yeah, definitely. But uh, one thing that EG will try to do is that they will try to force a 5v5 or a group fight. So uh, if anything, they should... Five man down mid whenever they can get lane control, and and this will just basically be a battle of who who has more experience and who can control the lanes better. So if EG can control lanes and they get like laning momentum with creep equilibrium, uh, they can easily five man down mid and force Copenhagen Wolves to completely react and and force the five v five. So uh, we'll see how this goes. But you can see that Zed is always constantly trying to pressure top, and Shen is always trying to pressure up bottom. So if uh, EG can get lane control here and they push down mid, they can easily force uh, a 5 5 Yeah, I mean, EG just can't push down mid though. Lux, by the way, was on the bot lane defending against that Shen push. And that's going to simply buy more time here for Wolves Zed on top lane to get his split push going on. Hard to defend that one. And suddenly the entire Evil Genius team have to just recall back. And that's, e that's more time for Wolves to push out all the other lanes again. So it feels like just a downward spiral. If you defend one lane, Wolves is going to push out two other lanes and... I mean, what do you do against EG? Again, they're like this big Protoss ball that could win a 5v5 fight, as you can see Renekton. You don't even know what he's in right now. Here comes Zed. Oh my god, the damage output is coming out. Half HP down. He's done. Is he? He's gonna try to survive. He's so close. Try to live. He's actually gonna live out there. I do believe Shen's gonna be coming in very, very soon. Zed in big trouble with being shielded here. Wick is still alive. Not for long, though. Shen's after him. Shen is gonna get the kill eventually, but Zed in bigger trouble. Zed's gonna finally go down. Snoopy is gonna pick that one up. But Shen does pick up kills, so 1v1 trade, but more importantly, look at it forced three or four people rotation up top. Copen Hogan Wolf says, all right, we'll come to your mid turret, and that's their tier three turret. Here comes a rotation from Evil Geniuses. They will ward off everybody away. Despite losing Zed, it feels like CW is so far ahead right now. Yeah, definitely. CW has control of the game because they can control how the, lane, the lanes are playing out. They're basically drawing, they're basically making EG respond to their pressure, and that's never a situation you want to be in because you always want the other team to respond to your pressure because that means you have control in the game. So uh, it looks like uh, Zed is actually going to be going for more damage items. He's going to go for Last Whisper here. So he's not, he, he doesn't even think he needs uh, defensive items at all. So that's actually an interesting. Uh, uh, build path right there. Well, uh, big team fight goes on the mid lane here. Laser as well as a bunch of other AOE spells. Nice shield being chopped out here by Jarvan, tanking up on the front lines here. But it looks like, uh oh, Yellow P in big trouble. Yellow P is gonna be the first one to pick off, and well, they have lost gonna, uh, they have lost a lot of damage. It's time for uh, evil evil genius to back off as well. Uh, Zed back in the team fight there. So good defense here by Copenhagen Wolf, and evil geniuses now will be backing off. I mean, just going back to the point of Zed building. Basically, glass cannon at this point, right? I mean, he I don't think he has enough survivability to take on a heads-up team fight against EG, but the way that he's been playing right now, the, the better split clearing, and more importantly, he just needs to come in and backstab and, and basically kind of jump in and out of team fight, use that mobility to his advantage. He's not expected to tank in the front lines, and if he does, he, he is going to just die regardless. Is that a fair wow, evaluation? Yeah, well, he's, and he just comes in on 1v3s and he just walks in. He doesn't even care because yeah, he just seems to take everything. He's gonna fall off here. No, he actually escapes with Living Shadow. And meanwhile, uh, the other team, Copenhagen Wolves, comes back with reinforcements and they're able to pick off Snoopy. So, uh, really good play from Zed. He actually knows, he, it looks like he just knows his limits. He knows exactly what to do and uh, utilize his escape skills very well, even without defensive items. So, it looks like they're just gonna push up bottom here and take a tier 2 while Graves responds. Uh, Zed might have to back soon, along with Shen, because they're pretty low HP. 
Yeah, back in the mid lane here, Evil Geniuses forced to defend there as well. They're gonna get a tier 2 turret, uh, for, basically for free. In fact, if you look at the minimap right now, is CW leading in terms of turret? They still have that tier 2 up top, right? Yeah, yeah, Minimap's they're a little up. bit blurry, so... Yeah, despite EG right being lead, I mean, EG was lean in terms of tower before. Now they're down, and... You know, Dragon be damned, look at how close this game is. This is actually evened up in terms of purely on gold, and EG is up on four dragons. I mean, you could do the math yourself. I think EG is actually losing this game now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the biggest uh, gold, or how Copenhagen was, was able to catch up on gold count is uh, uh, ZCS. Yes, he's up almost 70 now. So definitely he's farming up a storm while split pushing. And uh, he's slowly going to hit that four or five item mark right now. Uh, looks like uh, EG is going to react by pushing down mid. And... So far, nothing's going to be happening right now. And if they decide to push down mid, they got to make that one quick. Because, again, we've been talking about split push. We, we must sound like, uh, you know, broken records at this point. The game, the name of the game here for Copenhagen Wolf is split push. And they are just doing it mostly unpunished. I mean, Zed died once or twice uh, because of that split push. But he sees, the, he, he senses the game coming this time. We'll back off just fine. And as long as you draw two or three people going up to the top lane, I think he's done his job. So... Now he goes back alive, safe, and he's gonna go back in lane, seeing that there's no hero there or no champions here, and he's gonna make that same play again. Yeah, definitely. And as the later the game goes, uh, EG will actually have more openings to create five v five fights because uh, as the game progresses, they're gonna be building more items, and more items means that they will become tankier, they'll do more damage, which means Baron becomes actually an option for them. So they can force a Baron and they can force a fight. Uh, but at this point right now, they have Shen split pushing bottom, Zed split split pushing bottom. And EG is just gonna react by ignoring the top lane and bottom lane, and they're just they're just gonna go down mid. And driving my shades on uh, Varus. Varus has no flash, it seems. Uh, Varus is gonna go down, down, which is really bad for uh, Copenhagen Wolves because all they had to do was hold down mid, but now they're down, uh, they're dead. And it looks like EG is just gonna pile drive down the base down trade, mid. base trade most likely maybe. But I think EG is in a better uh, better uh, position right here because they can easily take down the throne right here. Uh, Shen is basing, or nope, Zed and Shen are still not basing. Shen TP's in, EG is going for the base, they're trying to, they're trying to kill him. Zed is basing right now, and just so much chaotic team fight going on. Z uh, Zin Zao doesn't even care, uh, looks like Super is going to go down very soon. But somehow, Copenhagen Wolves is able to turn us around 3v5. 3v5 and Zed is coming right now, he's coming fast, and the entire Evil Geniuses is on the run, and they have a whole bunch of knockup. Any knockup here, right here? Well, they're gonna get one kill. There's a knockup, but here comes Alistar, Hepa pulverized combo. Zed in the middle of the team fight, trying to do as much as possible. Zed in big trouble, Zed's losing all space tree. Zed is done! Now, Copen or Evil Geniuses, fine, man, they're all alive, but four of them extremely, extremely low. Fragon leading the charge, he's got the most HP, and if you're a CW fan out here, you gotta be very worried. No, EG backs off, they don't think they could win a fight inside the enemy base they're looking to do the uh, baron but i'm not sure they're so low in terms of health they have some like minuscule amount of healing from alistar but i don't think it's enough and here comes uh here comes cw they know that the baron is going to be attempted because they have the wards they see it doing it i, I don't know what you could you could take this uh baron yeah definitely uh copenhagen was has uh, three people home guarding back to baron oh Kreppel's uh doing his alistar ninja technique right here he lands a very good pulverize into two laser and they're gonna kill Varus right here, and they might kill Zin Zhao even. Oh, uh, is he gonna no. kill off? No, the Varus ulti ticks, and it's actually gonna save his life. So, uh, Copenhagen Wolves did their job, and looks like they stopped Baron successfully. So, somehow, I don't even know how that happened, but Copenhagen Wolves got caught. EG was getting a base trade, a very successful base trade, and uh, Copenhagen Wolves was actually able to come out fairly even. Even though they lost uh, in heavier mid. Yeah, it wasn't even a base trade because I mean, it was five people pushing down mid versus one top, one bot. The damage output here for CW heroes or champions was just simply not enough. So CW being forced to go back and somehow will still be able to chase EG out. Zed thought they were winning the fight. He jumped in. Suddenly they just turned on Zed and he died very quickly. So EG says, all right, we have the lead now. To me, the surprising decision was to actually go back on the Baron. I think they could have just went went for the win right there and went for for the throne, but seems like they they're like you know what let's go back and, and go for the Baron. Ultimately didn't get it, but was able to pick up one or two extra kill because of that. Now they're gonna pick up the fifth dragon, and I think they're back in the lead because they have the mid uh, the mid uh, inhibitor. But again, Zed is becoming an issue. The split push is gonna be a slightly weaker now because he's gonna have to push against bigger waves. Eg wants to go back for the Baron. I 
think, I'm not sure if they could do it again with three or four people, or five people back up alive here for CW. Yeah, EG is definitely just content right now to pick up their buffs and get all, all the dragons. Uh, they know that they can get lane control because uh, with one inhibitor down, all the creeps on their map is going to be uh, stronger and they're going to be pushing down all the lanes, which means this is a very good position for EG. However, it uh, looks like uh, Frog is going to base and I think he's going to pick up his Archangels and it's going to be a Seraph, which is pretty big because that's a very big uh, AP and a uh, defensive item. Zed's might meanwhile split pushing top, trying to get as much lane control out possible. Uh, I think EG, EG should just group up right here and get a get Baron control and force a, a pick off. Yeah, they recognize as well, they being the CW, as you can see the two uh, split pushers uh, recalling back and they're gonna use the boots and run all the way. In fact, are they gonna try to challenge this Baron? They gotta know Baron's gonna happen now. Baron's fairly tank and he does take a ton of punishment before going down, so CW's got some time. But they gotta react. Shen, of course, doesn't need to be there because he has his ultimate. Flag gets jumped out here for a little bit of extra sight. EG trying to take the blue, and looks like this might be the point of contention here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the blue buff's gonna get off. Oh, a, a light binding goes off. Zed, meanwhile, just W is out and is able to dodge everything. They know that Lux Lager is down, so they want to get a pick off right here. Uh, Zinza flashes in Crescent Sweep. Two man Tom with Shen. Uh, looks like they're draw moving forward. And. Yeah. Uh, it's not looking good here for CW, but as I say that Demelsian comes out here, everybody on EG is low, it looks like they're actually losing that team fight. Oh, Yellow P is low, he's actually gonna get a killing spree, still doing okay. Meanwhile, Zed is dead, Shizhao is dead, Shen's looking dead, oh no, Varus is already dead as well. Everybody is dead on CW, Ruru's on the run, he's not going up north, Wick is on the chase here. Meanwhile, Frog in full HP right now is going on the mid lane, he's chasing Shen, Shen's on the run, I think he's gonna recall back or maybe just run all the way back. Look Look at the creep wave back in the middle here, still tracing here on Lulu. Lulu just gets a slow up here, juking back and forth in the trees right now. And here comes, uh oh, here comes Froggen going for the win. Back and forth in the jungle wars they go. It's gonna be a polymorph solo. He does get off the polymorph. Mio Wick is not going for the kill. He's trying to make sure that, well, he's not gonna get the kill. Froggen gets another turret and he's gonna try to go for the win right now by himself. Damage output. And the hero's trying to defend here. Inhibitor respawns. And now Froggen has to go back. He's in a little bit of trouble himself here. I think he's going to make it out there alive. But why wasn't why wasn't uh, Renekton in there to help him I push? I, I actually don't think he's going he's gonna to live. Taunt comes out and he's actually going to die right here. This is really bad. Uh, home guard's coming out. Everyone is chasing after Froggen. And I think Froggen's going to drop right here. And that's really bad because uh, now they can actually... They can actually get uh, lane control back, and I don't know why Wicked just did not kill Lulu, or I don't know even why he chased after him. I think he just went down with Froggen and, and, and ended the game. I think they could have ended the game. Yeah, I think he was expecting to get that kill a lot quicker than it actually happened, and well, Lulu was running for her life, and I guess, you know, when the prey runs like that, the natural instinct is to chase, but in this case here, I think he, Lulu bought his team enough time. I mean, if, if Renekton was there, the game was over, right? Yes, definitely. And I think after uh, Wicked committed, I think the whole team decided to just uh, let him play around with his prey so uh, that Lulu doesn't respond or back off in time. So I interesting decision making from there. Uh, whether it was the right one, it's pretty questionable. But uh, yeah, right now, uh, e EG, that last fight was a complete 4 four for 4 trade. Or 3 for 4 trade. Yeah, 3 for 3. It was a 3 for 3 and then uh, Froggen died at the end. So, Froggen and, and Lulu died in the end, so yeah, I mean, definitely. it depends on how you call it. But now CW is walking into the Baron himself, and let's see if EG could challenge this. Oh, uh, Baron's losing a ton of HP and losing it quick there as well, but Wicked as well as the EG squad says, Alright, you can do the Baron, you can get your buff, but we're coming for your base. Inhibitor back in the mid lane, it might have respawned, but man, that thing's going to be going down quick. Zed trying to get some backstab going on. Why? Uh, EG yeah, is backing like a, off? Yeah, e EG is afraid. They actually don't. They know that people are going to home guard back in. And looks like there's only three here. Lux is out of position. And uh, uh, Snoopy goes in. 3v4. I don't know what Snoopy is doing. This is this, this looks really bad for Evil Geniuses. Uh, Varus is actually doing damage without uh, getting anything. Getting no damage mitigated. Uh, they're going to take down Snoopy right here. They're going to kill Wicked right here. And looks like they're going to kill Yellow Pete and Crabble. So I actually don't know what that was about. Snoopy initiated when none of his damage dealers were in position. Kreppel was uh, clearing wards on the top side. So pretty questionable right there. I think that was a, that was a big throw for Evil Geniuses. I mean, holy crap. Lux, Lux was nowhere near. No, Lux was at the river at that point. Sure, she has a laser to kind of contribute, but 
I mean, damn. And now suddenly, Copenhagen Wolf gets a pretty clear wipe advantage. And they're coming right now. Home guard coming out for Lux, trying to slow it down. But there's really nothing she can do. Two champions going up on top here to get the inhibitor. And of course, there's three or four champions, three champions going down mid to get the turret and the inhibitor as well. Suddenly, Copenhagen Wolf is going to get two inhibitors. I think Evil Geniuses is going to respond. They're going to be coming back in 10, 15 seconds. So their base is should be okay. Base being the throne, but... They have lost so much advantage in Copenhagen Wolves. You're playing against two split pushers when you have two inhibitor down. I don't think you come back from that situation. At least you gotta have to have some expert defense in the next couple minutes. Yeah, you definitely know when something is wrong when uh, Copenhagen Wolves is actually winning five v fives versus EG, even though EG has. A well, that wasn't a five v five though. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was... it actually wasn't. Uh, so I actually don't know what's gonna happen now because uh, Copenhagen Wolves has so many turn the tables now they have all these items they're four or five items now and, and they can easily get baron control and force to pick up with the lanes pushing down between mid and top and look at bottom wave right now bottom wave is so big if copenhagen wolves just backs off and, and doesn't even want to fight someone has to go bottom on eg otherwise they're gonna lose that inhibitor or if they want to take a fight right now and as long as they come out somewhat even more structural damage being done against eg space right now and again they're just buying time and eg i don't think they even have time to do the baron right well they're gonna uh, try to do it meanwhile here we do see Zed, all right, here comes your Baron. You could do it. I'm gonna get your third inhibitor, and that's gonna force entire Evil Genius team to go back. He's gonna just at least get some chip damage on the Baron. A huge creep wave right there. Zed, you gotta make it out alive, though. Don't really go for it. Home Guard's coming right back in. Look at how low that inhibitor is going. Zed's on the run. He's gonna eat a laser to the face. He's gonna make it out. He's gonna use his flash right now. He does have last shadow. So, so low. He's on the run. He's building glass cannon, but it's gonna make it out alive. Meanwhile, CW says, all right, you're not here. We're gonna, gonna do the Baron. Man, they're just playing Evil Geniuses like on a string. <laughs> evil Geniuses have to go back, they go left, they go right, and here suddenly the blue, or not the blue buff, the Baron buff gets picked up by CW, and I, I don't think EG win right now. It's just too much stuff stacked against them. Yeah, right now uh, Zed doing so much work there. He, he made five people teleport back, and uh, with five people, were, five people back chasing down Zed, that, that means it's a free Baron for them. And the best part is Zed lived without, well, I mean, he is summoners, but that, that's fine. Because now what they're going to do is they're going to group down five mid, and with, uh, with creep, creep advantage, they can easily take this game, I think, if they play correctly. Yeah, I mean, and of course, you have the Baron buff, so you have such a high advantage here. And I think they could just slowly walk on the bot lane, group up to five, and of course, with the turret being such low HP, they could just throw one or two champions and basically you're going to trade for it. Uh, but I think they're going to play it safe rather than sorry. And here we go, the slow push is going to come here for CW. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one, one thing to know is that Froggen actually doesn't even have his void staff right now. He actually went, met, went Ninja Tabbies, which means he, just, he has zero magic pen besides from his runes. And that's really big because on, on uh, Copenhagen Wolves, they have, they have like two lockets, they have a bulwark, they have so much MR from uh, base and uh, scaling MR stats means that Froggen's damage isn't actually doing that much. All they have right now is Yellow Pete, and Yellow Pete will not go through five, uh, four tanky heroes. Well, he will have to try. I mean, right now Inhibitor in big trouble, and look at them walking slowly, getting a one chip hit once in a while, and it's just an elaborate dance. Again, EG still has to go 5v5 five five AoE advantage. They gotta, they gotta hit their ultimates, they gotta hit it big here, and the team fight is not looking good. Nobody focusing here on the Inhibitor just yet. Where's Zed? The chaotic team fight. Zed is focusing on one, and Zoran being used. Snoopy so low, he's gonna go down finally. Laser getting popped out, not enough damage out with the lack of magic pen, like we talked about. Alistar is gonna be in big trouble as well. Zed gets a double kill. Is he working on a triple Zed in the middle of fight? He is not caring. They get the last inhibitor and suddenly the throne towers, the throne turrets are in huge trouble. The game is over. CW on an amazing comeback. Wow. Holy crap. I don't even know what to say. Evil Genius has had the game at back. Uh, but I guess I guess they just threw it. I don't know. Copenhagen Fools really well played after taking advantage of uh, EG's mistakes. And... That said, just completely on VP right there. Well, that was a pretty intense game. So I think that's a good ending point right there. Whew. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from uh, from the way that Evil Genius is played, but the split push from CW was pretty amazing. And they slowly, I mean, they, they, had, they were facing against a huge disadvantage in terms of gold and map control, but they slowly eked it out uh, through very, very good split pushing. So thank you very much, Link, for... Uh, casting this amazing League of Legends game with me. I hope uh, I will have you more on uh, future casts as well. Of course, if you want to support Link, 
go follow CLG Link or at CLG Link on Twitter. And of course, I'm at Luminous Inverse on Twitter as well as Facebook, Luminous Inverse. Hope you guys enjoyed this League of Legend cast. And as always, this is Link as well as Luminous. We are signing off. GG guys.